What's up everybody? Today we are tackling cards. So what is a card? Well, basically it's just a few pieces of data typically that's encapsulated into a physical card format. So I'm gonna show you how to build cards for this design right here. And then I'm gonna put you to the challenge by designing your own cards for this layout right here. Now, very important. If you want me to review your design, you have to make sure you submit it within the three hours of this video being uploaded. So it's uploaded at 10 a.m. You have to have your design in by 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I still may not review your design because if I get two submissions that are very similar, it wouldn't make sense for me to review those designs. I know some of you are mad because I haven't been reviewing all of your designs, but if they're very similar, it wouldn't make sense. All right, I'll stop talking now. Let's get back to it. All right, everybody, here we go. So if you open up the Figma document, we're on lesson three cards, right? Oopsie, right here rather. And you'll notice this is very familiar. This is from the previous lesson. And this time we're gonna do cards right here. So here's the information. Um, and I did decide to include icons already. So you might wonder, where did I get these icons? I want you to install this plugin because uh, I use it very frequently and you're gonna need to use it probably in the next challenge as well. Um, and if you go over here, go to plugins and type in Iconify, it is this one right here, okay? So what's really cool about Iconify, if you load it up, it's just basically a keyword search. So you can see like a little export icons right here. You can just left click, drag them in. And so I found some very similar um, icons that would work. So we can see where it says feature one details, seismic atrophy, whatever that means. I just made this stuff up. <laughs> um, we need to basically construct a card. Now, what's really cool here is about, you know, this particular fictional layout that I have, we have this kind of cool little aesthetic where we have this little, you know, kind of sci-fi little container. Um, and I got that originally from the original graphic right here that was generated by AI. Um, we can do the same thing for the card container itself. Now, do cards absolutely need to have backgrounds and containers in order for them to be cards? No, they can be kind of open-ended or open aired if you wish. And you'll see what I mean because I'm going to do a second variation of this with a card container and without a card container as well. But we are going to have our own card container. And this one we're going to do with the pen tool, which is really scary. But if we just use the regular rectangle tool, um, it's not scary, I know, but it's scary for beginners. If we use the regular rectangle tool to make it a little bit more difficult. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, all I'm going to do is just left click, hold shift, and left click, hold shift, just I'm, I'm basically keeping my shift uh, key on or activated. And I'm gonna create a 45 degree angle here and then make sure these meet up and then meet up right there. Then I'm gonna get rid of the stroke and we're gonna add a fill and we're gonna make the fill white. So why would I choose white? Um, well, when it comes to these light color backgrounds, or any background really. I really like the pattern, um, if you're gonna have a card background color, where the card is lighter than the background. That way it brings emphasis and attention to the card rather than opposite, instead of making it darker, if that makes sense. Um, so now we can, we can scale this up and it will distort the angle over here a little bit, but that's not a huge deal. Um, and the one thing I'll do is kind of initially just duplicate this and kind of see if we were to duplicate them how close they are based on the current width of each card. So I would probably reduce this a bit. And that way, if I duplicate this real quick, just as a matter of testing, we have pretty good white space in between them. Not too far, but not too, too close as well. Okay, so that's important. So I'm gonna delete these two right here. And now we're gonna start constructing the first card. And what's cool about this, is because these are repeating elements, you only have to do it once. And then it's just a matter of updating the content in each card. So seismic atrophy, you can see where it says up here is the first, this is the title. Um, do we want to put the icon first or do we want to put the, the title first? To a large degree, that's a subjective decision, meaning there's no right or wrong. In fact, we'll do that with our second variation. We're just going to flip them. I'm going to take this right here and copy it and we'll choose to put this first. All right. Make sure you're using your guides to make sure it's centered up. And you don't want it too close to the top. You don't want it too far. You want to just give it a nice amount of white space. And again, the white space will be dictated by the other elements and your grouping of the other elements as well. So this may change. So 
Next up, we have the seismic atrophy title itself. So I copied that. I'm just going to paste it in here. And we see where it says new. That's an indication that they, they want this to, we want to indicate this is a new feature or something like that. Not necessarily to leave it exactly like that. Um, so what we would, I would do here, first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look at our type that we've been using. Um, we're using Enter, we're using BBOS, and we're using Contrail 1. So three different fonts um, to make things super readable and simple. You know, we could choose BBOS for this. In fact, let's see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then I'm going to put a little new tag right next to it. So what's that going to look like? Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. We're going to put in new. And except we're going to make this really small, like size 14. Then I'm going to give it a background. But first, I'm going to kind of reduce this. I'm going to hit R for the rectangle tool. It's going to wrap around it. I'm going to push it, position it underneath it here in the layers section. And I'm going to give this color for that tag background um, the same one right here. That color code is FFEE93. All right. And then if we take both of these and choose Auto Layout, we can get this situated. I'm going to give a little bit of rounded corners. And we're going to see about putting it right around there. Might want to make this just a little bit larger and add a little bit more white space around on the inside or padding essentially. Okay, so that looks fine to me right there. Seismic atrophy. Then we're going to take the um, description, paste that in. Now again, I'm going to notice how everything is centered. So I'm going to keep this centered as well. So center the text. The text is pretty large. So we can go down maybe to 18. All right, so first we're going to make sure it's centered. And we don't want it to push it all the way out like here. That's not enough white space on the inside of a card. That's going to look like crap. You also don't want to do something like this where it's just way too much white space. There's always a middle ground. I would say right around there might be pretty good. Now we have to think about grouping. Do we want all three of these elements to be evenly spaced? I don't think so. I think I'd probably take this and move it up a little bit closer. Or we can move it a little bit closer to the description, which I kind of think I like that, that route better. Okay, so now we have that done. Then we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, where it says learn more button. Okay, so learn more of some sort. So for this learn more button, we have options. Um, I really like maybe perhaps taking this concept right here and continuing it on. So I'm just going to take that and paste it in. Oops, it pasted it in over there. There we go. Now, of course, visual hierarchy, that's way too large of a button. It makes sense up here because it's our hero section button. We want it to be large. But down here, that's a little bit much. So the first thing I'm going to do is like reduce this. And then I'm going to take this type and we're going to reduce the size quite a bit down to like 30 or so. And then I'm going to try to get this situated quickly. All right, I'm going to ungroup this. There we go. Okay. So we could make this wider if we want. And instead of get drum synth, synth we'll do um, more about seismic. Okay. Now, do I really like using black for this? I mean, we could. We certainly could use black. You have other color options, though. Um, what you could do is you have multiple. Let me show you just several different options that so that we could style this in interesting ways. We could give it a background like that yellow and make the text black. That works. Um, just to show you a little bit more, if I duplicate this, um, just to give you other ideas, we could also give it a, a sorry, a stroke. 
This works as well. Or we could have a very light stroke. That works. So as you can see, there's no, you know, one size kind of fits all. You have options and that's the fun part. That's what makes it creative. Okay, um, for me, trying to think about how I want this. I think we could go out all the way. There we go. And then I will adjust this. There we go. Okay, so that works right there. Now let's go ahead and take this and duplicate it. Now, of course, I know what some of you are thinking who might be more skilled than beginners. This should all be in, in um, components and component variants. We're gonna get into that stuff later. Right now, I just wanna focus on the actual design stuff so that we get bogged down with too much information. So then once we have that very simple AI compression, now it's just a matter of matching these up. So if I just take this, paste this in, move this over, AI compression. This is not a new feature, so we'll just make sure this is oopsie, centered up. And then we'll copy this. Pro tip, if you paste this in, just control V, it's gonna take the styling with it. If you don't, control shift V, will paste it without any formatting. More about, um, Let's see, compression, if we have the space. There we go. That's that one. And then finally, we have the last one. All right. And that is easy export. We'll be done here in a second. I have to get that, make sure that's lined up properly in a bit. Copy this, delete paste, get these all over here, control shift V, and then finally, okay, there is the uh, card designs, which I think are pretty good, um, let's move them a little bit like this, and then take this up, and there you go, it is structured here pretty decently, I'm not sure if I really like the uh, the yellow, so you know um, we could we could maybe go real light on it, like that. That could work. There's a lot of things that could work. We like I said, we can make it an, uh, an outline uh, like this. Kind of just going to leave it like that, I think. Okay, so just to show you that you have options before we move on to the actual challenge, um, you know we could take these elements and just delete them. Okay, so they're not encased in cards. I would still call these kind of cards. They're just, you know, borderless essentially. Um, you know, and if you wanted to do something like this, and move these in the center, you could also do that as well. And this time I would probably take these button backgrounds get rid of the stroke and just add a white feel fill to them. So you can see this, uh, we have the same layout, but we have two different card approaches, which could work. I kind of like this one because it, it increases the, the contrast. It, it gives us a physical card and it kind of just highlights the section better. Um, but this perfectly, you know, could work as well. Um, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch gears and now it's your turn, the fun part. So I quickly designed this little fictional landing page, kind of like a, a more trendy landing page. Um, you know, you can imagine this little vial or whatever, this, this, this what do you call, perfume, perfume bottle, like rotating if it were in 3D. It would be very cool, potentially, this layout. So now you gotta create cards that will fit within this area here. All right, three different cards. The details are all right here. So kind of structured very similar to this section. This time though, I didn't provide you with a, a, an icon. I want you to do an icon, uh, include an icon with this using the Iconify if you want, or you can use any other icons that you, you, know, you wish. You can find a lot of icon libraries on the Figma community section as well that are free. Um, so basically try to 
make these cards designed in such a way that really fits with the rest and the theme and the feel of this design, all right? It should feel like everything is a nice cohesive brand, a visual identity that's that's really, you know, just consistent in all its application of the various UI design fundamentals. That could be the topography, you know, use, you have plenty of type options to use here. We have enter, black, enter, bold. I would probably not utilize this made of stardust right here um, for anything other than what I just used it for. It's only three words and it's just elegant and whatever. Um, so really, I would probably stick mainly just to enter. That's all you really need. I don't want to give you any more hints than that. I, but remember, simplify as much as possible. Um, so as always, you're able to share this. Um, so when you get done, click share, click copy link, and then go head on over to X. And you know, hopefully you followed along, you know how to do this already. And make sure to use the hashtag 30 days UIUX and tag me and follow me if you haven't. And tomorrow we will take another look at what you all came up with for your cards for this particular layout. And we'll keep on going after that in the 30 days UI UX series. Make sure to sub up if you haven't yet. Check out designcourse.com and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.